Hi everybody, I'm Reverend Ivy Rivera, Psychic Medium. Welcome to the Ask a Medium live uh, interactive show here on Ustream. You guys can send your questions into me, psychic, mediumship, paranormal, lost objects, spiritual development, whatever your questions are, uh, through text at 716-602-1391. I'll give that one more time, 716-602-1391. You can also log on uh, to Facebook. Are we doing that still? On the Ask a Medium uh, event page for Ustream, and you can log your questions on there. I think we have a couple posts running on there, too, where the questions are starting to build. So, you guys, feel free to do it that way or just go directly on to Ustream and uh, send them in through the feed, okay? And then my lovely producers over here will be um, handing them down over to me. Um, we do have a show on Tuesday evenings at 7 o'clock right before Down the Rabbit Hole. Uh, that radio show is on ParaX. It's an internet show. I do that with my uh, beautiful co-host, Tree. And uh, we take any spillover questions that we don't get to uh, tonight, uh, we get to as many as we can. If you're looking to have your question answered really quickly, you can also book a reading with me. Or if you just have the one question, I do one question email reads. You can find more information about that at ivyriverapsychicmedium.com. Now I'm coming to you from the Ivy League Psychic Academy in Amherst, New York. And we're taking the academy and making all the classes downloadable so that internationally you guys can develop from wherever you are in the comfort of your own home. So I'm looking forward to that. In the meantime, if you can get here, um, we're located at 4511 Main Street in Amherst, New York. And you guys can Skype in for almost all of the classes. Psychic uh, mediumship development, uh, Reiki, astrology. We have a tarot training class coming up meditation, all kinds of great things going on here at the Academy. So basically we have a ton of questions going on here tonight and I really don't feel like teaching tonight. So I'm just going to jump right into it and we're going to open with a question from an 807 number. This is coming from a Danielle and she said, I have a friend whose sister went missing years ago. Her name was Cynthia Davis. The family doesn't know whether she's dead or alive. I was wondering if you can answer that question. Okay, a body was never found. Okay, let me see what I can get on this. First thing that I'm really feeling with it is that I didn't, um, I didn't run away. I feel like I have a little bit of a personality where uh, I could, uh, and I'm referring to Cynthia, okay, as Cynthia speaking for her energy. I get the sense that I... I liked my own space, I liked to do my own thing, but I didn't run away, I didn't leave. Um, I am getting the impression that I went away uh, for a bit and it feels to me almost like I didn't intend to stay gone for quite as long as I did. Um, I would hate to say uh, 100% um, whether she's gone or she's still here with us, um, but I am going to say this, I feel like it's going to be uh, a while before you necessarily find out. I also don't get the impression that you will be finding out 100% um, without an awful lot of investigation. I feel that um, with her whereabouts, she's been in some very uncomfortable situations. I feel a lot of drug-related situations, and I wanna say that there aren't many watchful eyes um, on her or the situation. So I'm going to put it this way. Um, I would expect probably not to be hearing from her anytime soon and I would dig a little bit deeper. I would also recommend uh, Danielle or your friend who is Cynthia's sister, I would recommend that you come in for a, a criminal investigations and missing persons class here at the Academy where we can collectively read the situation when I'm not down to like two or three minutes, okay? Because that's a little pressure and there's a high level of accuracy that needs to happen here. Um, but I don't think that you'll be hearing anything and I think that you should probably at this time dig much deeper. And I feel like I'm out of state. I'm hearing out west, I'm also hearing Arizona and I'm feeling almost like a shadier uh, area kind of reminds me of like, um, you know, Phoenix, um, just a questionable part of town. Um, 
sorry for anybody from from Phoenix. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, we will get to that. Okay. Stay in touch, please. Uh, from a seven one two number. I have a, hi Ivy, a Nick's friend Marissa. Hi Marissa, my question is, I'm getting involved in this new money making setup kind of recently. Is it a good idea or will there be any bad consequences? Okay, let me see what I'm getting with this. Um, I don't really feel like there are going to be any bad consequences, but I feel you getting involved. I feel it not being what you expected it to be or what you had hoped for it to be. And then I'm almost um, tempted to correct myself and say you have a pretty good impression on what it is already. And I feel like it's kind of going to play out the way that you suspect. Um, there's something kind of shady going on. It almost kind of feels a little bit like a pyramid scheme. It just sort of feels like... Um, it feels like in areas where you would expect there to be prosperity, there is no prosperity. And in other areas, other things just don't seem right. They don't add up. Um, so essentially, you find that you don't feel it's a very good fit for you. And I would say that a good place for you to start as far as work is concerned is with something a little bit more simple than that. I almost feel that you could... Um, you could get involved in something that looks a little bit more like health care, where you would be going in and helping people, visiting people, bringing food to people, taking care of people, whether it's elderly or it's people suffering with conditions. I feel like it might be a little bit more elderly. Um, and uh, it's not volunteer work necessarily, but I do feel like it's more fulfilling. And I want to say that for you, it's going to be imperative that you're always in some kind of a healing role or a communicative role. And this just doesn't really feel like a good fit. I think that you could go forward with it and learn what it's all about. And there's absolutely no harm in that whatsoever. So I wouldn't worry. But it's kind of like get in, get out, do what you feel is right. Okay? Thank you so much for that question. I'm going to move on to a 914 number. Hi, Ivy. I've been searching for answers to different aspects of my life, but doors keep slamming shut. There are no answers anywhere. Will this let up anytime soon? Okay. Um, I'm going to say it this way. The feeling that I'm getting with you is that you need to do less. I feel that you're trying too hard. I feel that you're getting like upset in the stomach. There might be indigestion issues. Uh, it just feels like you're having some physical reactions to trying, trying, trying. Um, it actually looked like a period of hibernation for you where you were going inward and you were listening to your own instincts, your intuitive ability, you were listening more to spirit, you were putting it out there to the universe that you want direction on which direction to go in, but by no means were you reaching for anything. You were just really sitting passively by and allowing it to come to you. So I think that, um, I think you need to stop what you've been doing and in a way, that's taking control by giving up control. And then it will automatically um, come to you. And I feel like within six to seven months of you doing that, you're actually quite settled and you know exactly what direction to go in. Okay, thank you so much. You are being very watched over. Uh, they're like almost laughingly like waiting for you to do this. Just stop. Just stop. Okay, meditate, Reiki, receive it, sit, okay, and allow and, and watch. It's not about what you want. It's about what you assigned to do when you came to Earth. Okay, let's see what we have next. Now, I know that you have one over from, is that spillover from the radio show? Or what is that? Um, we have a question from last week's show for uh, a week ago, this Ustream show. Okay. Do you want to hear that now? Sure. Okay. This is from D-L-Y-J-A-H. They said, I'm trying to juggle a lot of projects this spring. What do you see? I feel like two need to drop. Um, I feel like a couple are worthwhile. There are two. There's, it's actually one piece, but it's broken up into two. And I feel like that's worthwhile. And I feel like you know that that's worthwhile. And you almost really can't get out of it even if you wanted to because you, you're really quite invested in it. And I feel good about that. I'd like you're excited about that. Then there are a couple other ones that I feel like you could really drop. Um, the one you're supposed to stay in for a period of time, maybe two months, and uh, I'll say that that could possibly be a double number, so two weeks, two months. 
um, before you start to feel like, I really don't need to do this. So this really isn't right for me. I'm not going to get out of it what I had hoped. And it's really going to be sort of a drain. And it feels very sort of elusive. Like you could be there, you could not be there. Um, I don't even know that the project will get finished necessarily, nor do I feel like that's your problem. Um, and so I feel like you're supposed to be there for a minute and then you can get out of that one. The one that I'm looking at directly underneath it, it feels like you maybe shouldn't have really even taken it on. I almost get the sense that you took it on based on lip service. Um, like you wanted to tell somebody that you would help or something like this. And I, I think that you could drop that pretty much immediately. Um, but I want to say that be careful not to bite off too much, okay? Don't bite off more than you can chew. And be mindful that when you do that and you've stretched your energy too thin, you're not going to be able to do the things you're supposed to be doing productively, and you could let a lot of people down. So I think this is a good time for you to learn how to um, juggle properly and only take on the things that you are positive you're supposed to take on. Because it looks like you're almost at a 50-50 deal here. Like half of it wasn't supposed to really, you know, happen. Not half, but a quarter, we'll say. Okay, so try to be more mindful of that in the future. Okay, I'm going to move on to a 201 number. Um, from a Jen. Okay, I was wondering if my mom had a message for me and who my guides are. Okay, let's see what's going on. I do have your mother coming in. I'm feeling like you're a little confused right now. I'm feeling like a little bit of pressure in the head. So you may be literally experiencing headaches or you might just be feeling a little bit confused in general. Um, what she's talking about is getting a little bit more rest. I feel like you may be um, woken up at night. I feel a little bit of uh, the mediumship ability kicking in. I also feel like there are some anxiety issues going on during the day um, that are bothering you at night. So you might find that there's a stirring and you're not completely rested. So she's talking about more, even though your day may not allow it, I almost feel like toward the end of your day, take more downtime. It's like, don't go right up until the last minute and then crash. I feel like sit more, rest more. Rest is almost as good as sleep itself. Um, so take more of that for yourself. I do also feel like it's a time of spiritual development for you. You need to be looking a little bit more into that, more quiet time. I feel like there are a lot of voices and words coming at you all the time. And she's just like, I don't know how she handles it, okay? But there's a lot coming at you, and you need to start tuning people out a little bit more. It's almost like you're in a meditative state of mind, and they just da, 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 all around you, and you're not even you're not even there. Like, you're looking at them, and you're just not even hearing it. And, and so I feel like you need to learn how to do that. So that's what your mother has for you. Um, and uh, I also feel like you're, you're washing a lot of, like, towels and bedding. I just feel like a ton of it. She's just watching you while you're, like, folding it and getting it ready. And I just feel like there's a ton of it. It's really, like, kind of in a pile, like, getting wrinkled. Um, and as far as your guides are concerned, uh, that's quite a long question because there's quite a lot there with the guides. Uh, I would recommend come to Meet Your Guides class. We'll have another one coming up in a couple months. Um, and keep checking uh, the Ivy League Psychic Academy website for that. Um, who are your guides? Your guides are your guides. Your guides are you have a joy guide, you have a work guide, you have a protector guide, and uh, you have a, uh, what, a relationship guide, okay, um, primarily, and then there can be a couple others. Um, but really, that's what you have going on. Everybody has them. They are there. Start talking to them one at a time, and they will be talking back, and you can start building a relationship up with them that way, and make sure you attend uh, the class as soon as you can, okay? Thank you very much for that question. Okay. Um, should I just keep going here with these? Sure. Okay, did you see the posts on Facebook? There should have been a couple Sorry. where people got under them. Mm -hmm. I just sort of did my own thing this week. I probably shouldn't have, so they're kind of all over. Um, okay, so I have a question from Deb. Wanted to know what my financial future looks like. Let me see what I'm getting with that. Okay. What does your financial future look like? First thing I'm seeing with you, Deb, is a lot of up and down, up and down, up and down. I feel like you're waiting for consistency. I look like if I go back about three years, I'm almost like three waiting for consistency, okay, back here. Um, and so... There's a little bit of a sense of, um, you know, am I kind of in the right thing? But I feel like you know you're really where you're supposed to be with that, or you knew for a period of time. Anyway, that's exactly what you were supposed to be um, doing. I feel like there's productivity in it. It just isn't the most consistent. Um, it also feels like there are a lot of things coming in from life. 
that are sort of taking the money, taking the earnings. And so that's been a bit of a component. Um, what I'm seeing is about a two month period where there's not a whole lot of change going on. And then I feel like there's a big free will domain coming up where you would essentially have some decisions to make about your finances. And based on the decisions that you make, you could push this into a very um, profitable future or you could potentially lose out um, on some profit there. I feel like even if you kind of miss the boat, the opportunity would come up again about four months later. Um, but I think you need to be on it. And I feel almost as though you just want to keep plugging away with some of the things you're trying to get rid of and release from the past, whether that's like debt, payments, whatever you're paying off. I feel like that um, can't be moved. That's very solid. So just keep on um, going there. And I feel you potentially looking into something else that would bring money in. Almost like a second job or possibly looking at shifting out of what you were doing into something else. So there will be uh, opportunities. It also feels like some money might be coming in um, from somewhere else. I'm not saying settlement necessarily, but it feels like an outside source. Um, so that's a nice surprise. Uh, yeah, so free will domain. There are some decisions for you to make. You will have the potential to increase it. Absolutely. Uh, let me see what I want to go on to here. From a 997 number. Uh, okay, so she says, or he says... Uh, this feels more like a female to me, but hi Ivy, I'm grateful for all of the abundance in my life, but still, we barely make it paycheck to paycheck. Which path should I follow to create a more comfortable financial situation for my family? Okay. Um, all right. I'm supposed to say it this way. Um. It almost feels, it, it feels like I, I have you with a partner who needs to, I want to say, branch off into some new things. And I almost feel like there are opportunities there that haven't been taken advantage of. Okay, so I feel like grab at those. Be mindful. Do more. And it's not the act of doing more. It's not the act of wasting our energy. It's the act of going after what we are supposed to that leads into more productivity. And I feel like some of the, the boat's being missed, okay, a couple times there. Um, that has everything to do with intuition. Um, so you be mindful of that, okay? Do a little analysis over there about what's going on. Um, where you're concerned, I feel like you are meant to plug along with what you've been doing, but I'm also getting a little bit of a sense of pulling away in a couple other areas where you're exerting energy and it shouldn't be exerted. So whether that's around circles that you feel are a little like below a really positive energy or you feel like um, whatever goes on in those places doesn't always turn up the highest profit, sometimes you have to do an analysis on where it is that you're spending your time and where it is that you're putting your energy and you have to say, why is there no profit coming out of that? Um, you may want to drop a couple things. Uh, I almost, I, I feel like what you're trying to build, I feel like it has a lot of potential to grow, but you're stagnating it by overexerting your energy out in a couple avenues that are really dead, okay? It would be the equivalent of going to like a, a dead church and expecting to have like Jesus come through and give you a profound message. The church is dead. If the church is dead, that's not, that's not going to happen there. It'll happen out on your own clock. You know, it'll happen when you're in the right time in the right space. Um, but that's probably your holdup right there. Okay, thank you so much for that question. Should I take one from there? Sure. Okay. Um, we have a question from Facebook from Bridget M. Okay. She says, any intuition on my health issues? Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you're having like lung and throat issues. I felt like something going on down here. Um, a couple different things going on. We don't have to get into all the, the detail. You know what you have going on. But the point is that you know, it really kind of feels like it drags, like it's kind of dragging for a while and I almost feel like I'm getting like pain in my back, I'm getting radiating pains, I'm getting almost like I feel like somebody came and knocked me, and like hit me with something in behind and it's just sort of this heavy dragging sense of energy and I feel like if I could, if I could just eliminate that and sort of elevate my energy level and just have my body not be, you know, so, so touched, um, with it, then I could just almost like be more awake and I could be more productive and I feel like I could handle it from there. 
So what I want to say to you is that it seems to me almost like the actual medical, and I can't prescribe a diagnosis, but the actual medical terminology that you've been given, I feel like all of this is pretty accurate. What you've been told you need to do for treatment, I feel like that's all pretty accurate. I just feel like there are other things that you could be doing, and you may have already been looking into like holistics, and um, I'm seeing oils, I'm seeing you eat oils, I'm seeing you put oils on, almost like an aromatherapy type of a thing, and then I felt like you were getting um, what felt to me more like acupuncture, um, and possibly Reiki in addition to that, and I just feel that I'm supposed to say it to you this way, I know that I do have your guardian angel stepping in here, kind of showing me all of this in uh, one fell swoop. The higher up your energy can get, and I do feel like you have a great energy, okay, real positive person, 99.9% um, .9 of the time, and I feel like you could carry the world, okay, your guardian angel just says like you could be carrying everybody else in addition to everything that you do, so keep just loving yourself, remember how beautiful you are, it's almost like I'm watching like notes around the house like telling you how beautiful you are that you wrote to yourself, and she said really they're from me, um, so just know that like if you could just get your energy level up and eliminate some of that pain through more holistic therapies, uh, I feel like you're really quite unstoppable and you can beat this thing, okay, in, in a lot of ways. Um, but it does kind of feel like it's the mm, a little more kind of just um, something lingering. It's about maintenance, okay, long term, all right? Although I feel like one of the things that you're dealing with could be completely eliminated. And that would that'll actually be really lovely. And that feels like it's a lot in here. Um, so, yes, yeah, some, some healing potential for sure. Should we take another one from there? You want me to go? Sure. There? Yeah. Okay. Um, one more from Facebook. Uh, okay. Denise HP. Wants to know if there are any messages for her or her love, for her from her loved ones that have crossed over. Okay. And um, there's some mention of a son or a younger male. I feel like watching over. Um, <coughs> I want to say that I have a grandmother who comes through here. I feel like passed from the choking the throat, the lung issue. I feel like she comes through and you get a lot of ringing in the right ear uh, with her. Um, or pressure in the right ear. But I also want to say that that's your psychic ability kicking up a notch. Letting you know. Um what's going on and you're not supposed to look to them you're supposed to look to your own intuition so i feel like you're in a, a phase right now and you have been for the last two years where you've been trying to build up your own intuition your own abilities and i think that's exactly where you need to be i also want to say that it seems like there are some people around i get particularly two males who are takers they want to take your energy they want to take your time they want to take your opinion maybe not use it or they just want to I almost feel like you're getting some lip service. I feel like there's sort of a draining, a little bit of a draining going on. I feel like you need to take your energy and conserve it more for you. Um, I'm getting you uh, these images of you two with books. So know that they're putting books and learning on your path. And I'm watching you taking more time away with the books and learning and more, um, just more for your own development, whatever that is, or more of what you enjoy. They're also saying that comes spring and summer, I'm feeling like two, possibly three trips away, but not none of them feel very far, but I feel like with a lot of positive feminine energy, and um, one would almost remind me of like Lilydale, one almost feels like Pittsburgh or New York City, I just feel like a lot of activity going on, and one feels like it's on the water, so I don't know if that's like Long Island or where there is a beach, but again, it doesn't feel far. So I have you doing all of this, um, potentially, and know that they'll be with you. Um, there's also a grandfather, or is it your dad? I want to say more feels like dad energy, big guy up through here who comes in. And um, he's talking about you. It's almost like playing cards, okay? Make it a, make it a joke about this. And uh, I feel like visiting you in a dream coming up very soon. So watch for that. He says one, one, one. So this either just happened or this is like happening in a day or a night. Um, yeah, okay. I also feel like repairs on the car. Make sure you're keeping up with the, um, like the tires. I feel like tires spinning, like watch your treads or something like on the car. And it feels like front pass, front drivers and then front passengers. Um, but a ton of love to you and a rose for birthday or anniversary right around this time. I'm going to go on to a 480 number. Are my self-doubts rational? Okay. Um, are my self-doubts rational? Oh, let's see what we got with that. Well, no, but if you doubt yourself, then yes. So I don't know that that's really a psychic question as much as like, I just sort of jumped into your energy and I was like, good, like I'm good. I know who I am. I'm pretty confident. Things are coming before me and I'm 
confident. There's really not a whole lot to this. This isn't rocket science, the life I live. And then all of a sudden, I'm like doubting myself and I have nothing. I don't know who I, I don't know what to do. I'm not capable. So it really, the only thing that I feel changes is that decision. You're making a decision chronically to doubt yourself. And until you stop doing that, then the answer is, I'm not sure exactly how you pose that question, but as long as you self doubt and you have that, then, um, you know, then, then your fears are rational. Um, you can kill the fear by facing it and by having confidence and confidence does not require that you have all the answers. It just requires you to stay calm and to move forward in what your intuition uh, told you to do. And that's it. You walk through it. It's kind of like being brave. Being brave doesn't mean that you're not afraid. It doesn't mean that you're not feeling the anxiety. It just means that you keep moving forward. Your biggest thing is one step forward, two steps back, and the procrastination issue. And I think that the other thing that you're doing is you're getting involved in situations where you're like, oh, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to move forward. If you're going to do it, then do it. If you're not, then don't bother. Because what happens is you start and then you start doubting yourself. You may as well have taken a nap that day. Okay, so don't allow that thinking anymore. Find thoughts that you're going to replace it with. Come up with a, a couple that you're, thoughts that you're going to hold on to and replace that negative thought with and don't let go of it. Um, I would also be a little bit mindful of um, your clear audience ability, the ability for negative or lower spirits um, to come in and put thoughts in your head that are not your own, and they would be negative and heavy. If you can call in your protector guide, and you can, I'm you know telling you, call in your protector guide, have your protector guide alert you when there is something negative around, possibly putting negative thoughts into your head, and ask your protector guide basically just to maybe give you like um, a ringing in the ears or a little bit of feeling of like maybe you're sweating or something like that. Something very simple to alert you to when it's happening so you can start monitoring it and um, learn how to control that ability. Clear audience is a gift and it's a little bit of a curse. Okay, but you'll be fine. You have no reason to feel insecure. You're perfectly capable. We have any more coming from here? Sure. Okay. Um, we have another one from Facebook from a Raymond F. Okay. He said, will I ever fall in love again? I feel like absolutely. Um, I feel though like you're attracting someone to you or the person that they sort of have in mind for you is very much opposite your energy. And so I feel like if you can calm down a bit um this person whose energy is super low-key might be a little bit more accepting when you when you do show up i feel like there's an adoration for you when the, when this person is there i feel almost like there's an adoration there's sort of a wonderment about you um i'm very curious uh you know i really love what you could bring to the table i feel like you can accomplish anything and um, I want to say that there's a gratitude for what seems like the amount of love that you give. And I want to say honesty. This person doesn't seem to have encountered much honesty in relationships. It's almost like dud, 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 dud. And then she's like, ding, ding, ding. Okay, we have something here. And I want to say feed that, feed that. You'll want to be a little bit careful when you reach the point um, where you want to start holding yourself back. And almost being a little bit more, um, you know, distant, like I'm really not available. Cat and mouse, I'd be very careful playing cat and mouse with this one, though. I wouldn't even go there at all. And, um, yeah, it almost feels to me like I feel four months out, but I don't think it's actually going to happen at four months out. I'm going to say about seven months out. And then uh, we'll start meeting, kind of interacting. Um, might be online in some way. And then I feel like a year and a half out. Um, I'm seeing quite a lot more being laid down with that. Okay, so some foundation. So keep it light. But I do feel like be aware of your energy um, when you're meeting people that you are, uh, you know, attracted to. Uh, because you may want to kind of lower it to hit a good vibration with them. I also want to say that it seems like this person um, communicates with people as a profession. And it's like very, very influential. Very um, good at manipulating energy. Okay, we have another one. Sure. Another okay. one from Facebook okay. from a Christy. She said, should I take a job offer or stay where I am? Hmm. Well, 
I feel like, uh, you know, it's up to you, of course. Um, so it's one of those situations where it's, it's, it's about when you choose to, uh, but I have to admit that it is really definitively that you need to go forward. So there's no denying that part. It's just kind of like when exactly should you go? I feel like you were about to go and then you chose not to. And then it seems like it's coming around again. And the first time I feel as though it was more optional and that was within the last year. That was a little bit more optional and they're giving me three. So three weeks, three months back also. Um, now it feels like yes. So I wouldn't push it much further or you may start to be made um, uncomfortable by the universe and by spirit. Uh, absolutely, I feel like go forward. I feel like many more opportunities um, coming with this position. Everything where you are now just feels a little bit stagnant. And even though I'm hearing uh, them say, like if I'm jumping in your energy, I can hear them saying to me or I can hear the job saying to me, no, no, there's more. There's room. No, I can do something more with this. I feel like, no, you can't. You can't. You know you can't. So just, you know, just go. And um, and is this the end all be all? Probably not, but it will open more doors. And then I feel like you're really, really getting into it. So it's kind of like if we were lighting a fire, the fire is really starting to go when you get into this new position and it's going to keep the flames going to get higher and higher. It's pretty exciting. So go. Enjoy. Okay. Okay. We have another one from Ustream this time from mm -hmm. Aquarius Moon. And Aquarius Moon said, can mediums accur accurately read for themselves and close friends? Thank you. Okay. Um, well, that's a great question. I appreciate that question, actually. Um, it is a myth that uh, mediums cannot read themselves uh, or other people. And we know what, how this became a common way of thinking is kind of beyond me because we always had, like, seances. You know, we always had. Um you know, mediums would get together and, and they would channel and do these seances and, and essentially read each other, right? So um, there, it is the typical belief that you can't, though. This is true. And I want to put it this way. It can be difficult to accurately give a psychic reading to somebody that you know because your left brain thinking, okay, where you can't be when you're reading, you need to stay right brain, you need to stay in the right brain waves. Your left brain, your logical thinking, your opinions, everything you know, can really impede a lot. And psychic ability is, um, is a little bit shiftier, I think, than mediumistic ability. Mediumship, okay? And we have to remember, psychics are not necessarily mediums. Mediums are automatically psychic. So if you're just straight up using mediumship ability, what you're doing is just channeling from the other side. You're holding a conversation with somebody from the other side. You know if they're really there and you know if they're not there. You know what's going on. So basically, if I were to strike up a conversation with like my good friend Tree's, you know, dad, and I were to be like, oh, you know, Tree's dad, like, could you come and give me some information? Everything would come directly from him. So it would be accurate. It would be stuff that only he would know. It would be stuff that only she would know. He would not use stuff that I would know because he doesn't want me confused and he wants that message to get across to her clearly. So he would come through and work and we work as a team. And so it's actually very, very simple. I would recommend that if you do have to read family or friends, you really stick to mediumship if you want to conserve your energy and not wonder um, or have them wonder. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty simple. What was the first part of that question, though? Can mediums accurately read for themselves and close Oh, friends? and for yourself. Yeah. For yourself, it, that's, that's a little tougher. Um, but I want to say it this way. Whenever I'm reading a situation for myself, I just take the very first impression. It's almost like I'm asking my higher mind. I just go in and I'm like, what is the situation? What is this person? What is the future? Whatever it is. And the very first thing I get, that's it. That's the final word. And if I ever doubt it, it always ends up being the final word. So go with your first uh, gut instinct and it's not that hard. Yeah. Okay. Another one from Ustream from Coyote Girl. Okay. She said, I feel like I have spirits or lurkers following me. Can you offer insight? Mm, I feel like... I feel like you do too. I feel almost like, um, okay, let me put it this way. Yes, they're there, but I don't think it's any more than what most people have when they start to really come into their energy. And they, as, 
Okay, as a psychic medium, you're learning. You're learning that this is really happening. You're understanding the energy of um, the situation when they are coming in and how it physically affects you. You're starting to get all of that. That's, that's great. As you acknowledge that, more comes through. So what is going to need to happen at this point is that you learn how to manage those energies. You learn how to say to all the spirits that are following you around, not now, um, I'm not working right now, or, you know, come back later, or what is your message, and if they don't have a message, they have to go, because that's not normal. Um, you will learn how to manage all of that. In doing so, you eliminate uh, the majority of what's coming through. Um, so essentially where I am now in my career, I've asked that nobody's bothering me until it's really time for the show or it's really time for me to sit down and give that reading. Does it always work? No, it doesn't always work because I'm not always enforcing it so hard, but, uh, but I did for years and I've cleaned it up a lot. So you can eliminate when you get more relaxed, there will be an increase and more of them will come around. There's not a ton, um, that we can uh, do about that. Uh, but I would recommend level one psychic mediumship development class for you. We start another one in February and then another one in March. And you can uh, Skype in for those uh, if you need to do that. So check out um, Ivy League Psychic Academy .com. But yeah, you have a lot going on around you. The most important thing to remember is that the majority of the time, as long as you are saying only the highest and best can be around me, Okay, for a helpful uh, healing purpose, as long as you say that every day and you call on your protector guide to help you with that, you should be able to eliminate anything negative um, and put your foot down. Your energy is your own and you need to conserve it. You can't be working all the time. You'll go out of your mind. Okay, it's too much. And uh, the other thing is remember that it always increases. It never decreases. We only go up from here. Okay. Thank you so much for those questions. Okay, guys, I will see you next week. Thank you for tuning in for Ask a Medium here on Ustream. And check out uh, the Para-X radio show, also called Ask a Medium, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays before Down the Rabbit Hole. And we are taking this show out onto the road. We're getting our lineup set up. So if you have a haunted location, uh, maybe something really cool and historical that you would uh, enjoy having us out for, where we can um, film the show and advertise what you have going on there. Feel free to contact me uh, at Ivy Rivera on Facebook or uh, look up the services that I offer at IvyRiveraPsychicMedium.com. Thanks so much.